Hello, I'm Jude Scott and this video is all about how to paint a wave at the beach in watercolour. Easy to follow steps and I'll be guiding you through this um, even if you've never painted a wave before. Um, here is the original image that I've used and you're quite welcome to take a screenshot of this and print it off if you'd like to have a go at painting it yourself. I've made the image smaller in size, I've reduced it and I've keep that in the top left hand side for you so that you can um, refer to it from time to time. Um, you don't have to paint religiously what you see um, and I have deleted that rock that's sitting out there by itself on the wet sand because I don't think it adds anything at all to the painting. And here I've started um, with a mix of cobalt blue 290 and ultramarine in Holbein. Uh, that's the blue for the sky. I've wet the top one third of the paper so that all of the sky is moving together just like a real sky and you'll get beautiful soft edges in your sky if you wet the paper first and use quite a bit of water when you mix your pigment up. You need strong pigment because the pigment's quite watery when you mix it up and when you put it on to wet paper it dilutes the pigment further so mix it just a little bit stronger than what you would because it will fade by about 10% when it's dry. If your paint is not moving freely over the paper you probably haven't got enough water when you first wet the paper and make sure your paper is evenly wet and you can check that by holding your board that the paper is attached to um, up against the light and you'll soon see if there's any dry patches Dampen them before you start putting your pigment on, otherwise you'll get very hard edged areas in the sky. So here I'm going to lift out some of the white, lift the pigment back to plain paper and just put some clouds in. So I've got a very wide brush here that I'm using. Um, these are all the information about the materials used will be under the video. Um, below this so that you can see what I've used. Um, the the grey for the sky was the same as what I used ultramarine and blue for the blue areas in the, the sky but to this I added a little bit of Mars violet just to make a lovely warm grey. For the far distant hills I've just added a little bit more ultramarine um, and a little bit more cobalt just to make it a little more blue than the sky. And if you can get your brush um, not too wet, for this it needs to be reasonably dry, the pigment and your brush. Don't have it soaking with water so that when you take it straight across the paper you'll get those lovely white sparkles left behind which are really easy to turn into little buildings or a town or a village. Whatever is in your area that you would like to leave um, just a little bit of white. It can always look... Um, so good and if you've got too much that's easy just touch it with a little bit more pigment and reduce it but there we have a little town so how easy is that I'll just remove that area of hill it's just creeping up into the sky a bit too much so this is just a damp brush so a damp brush is one that's freshly rinsed in clean water and dry it well that's why I always have a towel behind me I just dry that brush really quickly on, on the towel and it makes it just the right amount of liquid for me when I'm painting. For the ocean here I've used um, the same as what I use for the far distant hill but just added more ultramarine and more cobalt. And now I'm putting some more ultramarine in just so that you've got that lovely balance of light and dark and warm and cool ocean rather than just a flat color. You don't have to stick slavishly to your image. You can, I'm going to put boats in at the finish. There's no boats out there, but it's easy to take reference photos of boats all over the place. And um, it always adds a bit of interest rather than having it just plain beach. Now the colour I'm using here is cobalt turquoise and I think it's a must for painting ocean. It has that lovely translucent quality that 
light in shallow water over white beach sand will, will seem to give you. So I'm using it again here. Um, I'll just reposition that a bit. And you can see this is my paint palette on the left. It's got big mixing wells. So I always like to mix up lots of paint that I'm going to use first. Don't mix it up watery. Make sure it's quite strong. You can always add more water to it. But if you make it too strong with, or too watery, sorry, to start with, you can't um, do anything with it. If it goes on too wet, then you just have to wait and wait for it to dry. And you won't get that fresh, just painted look. So if you've downloaded the image, um, you'll be able to see in the looking through this wave the light is coming through and where the water is very thin where there's not much depth to the wave or much thickness not a lot of body of water the light can travel through the water much easier and it will give you lovely that beautiful cobalt turquoise color and where the water's thicker at the base of the wave where the water is more dense and the volume is much greater you'll get much darker water so that's what we're going to look at now really carefully to try and get areas of light and dark that replicate the image to get that movement of the water coming into the shore. So there's lots of things to be careful of and to look out for when you're doing that. The lines of foam that go back and travel up the face of the wave, they need to, your brush strokes need to replicate that. So you can't just have stripes coming straight down in a vertical sweep from that cloud. You've got to sort of exaggerate even where that light is and where the foam is. And you can drop some darker paint into what you've already painted so that you get that lovely soft watery look with no hard edges. So this is a mix of a bit of cobalt and also some turquoise cobalt because within that water between the shore and the wave there is some of the water is very shallow so it'll be lighter there's a lot of foam in there and some of it will be darker so that's why I've dropped the cobalt in. So the um, face of the wave on the right hand section is quite damp so I can't put any more pigment into that until it dries just a little bit more otherwise it'll be too watery and I won't be able to get the effect that I want. Where the foam is crashing over just leave that at the moment as unpainted paper. You will never get um, white as brilliant as just the unpainted paper. You can always add a bit of gouache or titanium white or Doc Martens white at the finish but it never looks quite as magical I don't think as um, unpainted paper and if you think maybe you couldn't tackle this wave it's um, just uh, too much for you if you haven't had a lot of experience with painting waves just tackle a section of the wave you don't have to do the whole landscape just try a little bit of it and just get the hang of dropping different blues in and seeing if you can get the movement of water. And movement is never horizontal. It's always got um, a little bit of a diagonal sweep to it. And you can exaggerate that with some white for the foam, leave unpainted paper, and the direction of the st brush strokes will add to that feeling of water rushing into the shore. So um, I'm using here um, a calligraphy brush. I love calligraphy brushes because they hold so much paint. And as you saw for the sky and doing the horizon, you can go across that um, piece of paper, which is um, a half sheet. So it's 56 centimetres by 38 centimetres. You can go across twice with a brush load of paint and you won't run out of paint. Um, and they always go to a beautiful point. So I love my calligraphy brushes. 
and they really suit my hand-eye coordination. I think everybody's different, so um, it's really good to find a brush that suits your way of painting. The big flat brush that I use to lift the clouds out, that's um, a paint brush that I've bought from the wonderful Canadian artist, Michael Soloviev, and I'll put his details at the end of the video too, so that if you want one, you'll be able to um, contact him and buy one. They're really, really good. So now I'm just going back and softening some of those edges um, with this one inch. This is a synthetic brush. I don't use a lot of synthetic brushes, but this one is perfect for lifting out. So I'm sort of working over the whole of the wave at the same time um, while I'm sort of cross-checking and cross-referencing the image so that I can get the darks in the right place to get that movement of water um, billowing over the top, the foam, rushing over onto the sand. And while waves are difficult to paint, and if you're painting them in watercolour, it's a lot more difficult than doing it in oils or acrylics. Um, and I think for that reason, that's why I call watercolour the thinking artist's pigment, because you do have a lot to think about and consider before you even start your painting. So if you can paint a wave in watercolour, you'll be able to just bowl it in with um, oils and acrylics it would be so much easier for you but there's something magical about being able to sit on the beach and paint the water just using simple watercolors very satisfying so under that section of foam the um, sand is kind of showing through and this the water there or the tones of that area are quite dark so make the, the paint the pigment just that little bit stronger and it will work for you <clears throat> so I'm just mixing up some more paint and I haven't realized that my paper where I'm going to be painting you probably won't be able to see it oh dear this is a bit of a blooper Sorry about that. So still this is what layer number four. So because the paints are transparent you can keep adding layer upon layer so long as the layer underneath is completely dry. If that wasn't completely dry you run the risk of getting a very muddy look um, and the paint won't look fresh, the painting won't look fresh, it'll lose some sparkle. So if, it, if it's dry between layers that's fine, you can put up to 20 layers over the paint of, of pigment, one over the top of the other, but don't put it over damp paper. The only time you can paint in watercolour is either if the paper's wet which means if you hold it up to the light it's shiny or if it's dry and I mean really really dry otherwise it'll you'll start getting cauliflowers and the paint can quite easily become dull so this is the area that does take um, a long time I painted this and now I'm doing the voiceover so I've cut quite a lot of time out that I sort of spent mixing paints and um, fiddling about so I've bought you just the actual painting um, so just do layers and layers and if you think um, it's not working for you get up, go away, have a cup of tea, make a coffee and come back to it and even the next day is fine. Pop your painting up somewhere, maybe it, somewhere in the house, on the kitchen bench or somewhere, so that as you're going past you can just 
catch sight of it and if there's something wrong with your wave it will scream out at you you go oh gosh that's too light too dark or you might have too many sharp edges the other thing you can do if your painting's not going well turn your image if you're painting from a photograph a bit hard to do it if you're painting plain air you don't have the luxury of doing it there but turn your image upside down and turn your painting upside down and put them side by side and just take your eye from one to the other one to the other and if there's anything wrong with your drawing or your tones you will certainly see it another thing you can do is take a photo of what you've painted so far and convert it to black and white uh, or monotone in your camera or your phone and if it doesn't look right in black and white it means that your tones aren't diverse enough you need about one third light and two thirds dark or two thirds light and one third dark so that um, ratio will always give you a more exciting painting than if you have tones that are 50 50 so this is going to be a painting that's two-thirds light because there's a lot of light sky there's a lot of light um, in the beach and the darks have to be quite dark and that will really give your painting a bit of oomph so within the water that I've painted here there's some very cool tones and some very warm tones so as the uh, far distant ocean has dried you can see it's become quite a warm blue and in the foreground I've actually got some very cool ocean colors that cobalt turquoise is really cool so it's always a great idea to have warm and cool colors in your ocean as well as in your sky so I've got warm clouds and I've got the cool um, cobalt and ultramarine mix for the blue of the sky now here I'm just I've just mixed up just raw sienna um, and I want to replicate that shoreline that goes along the beach so if you look closely back at the image you'll see that the shoreline is never dead straight there's always little ripples coming in um, and in this particular one there was a lot of white foam that crashed from the wave right up to the rocks but I've deleted all that so you can paint you know make the painting up in areas you can add some things in and take things out so I've taken out the, the big rock that didn't that certainly was never going to make a good painting and I've extended some of the ro other rocks down a little bit and I've taken out a lot of that white foam I just thought it would not make for a good tutorial to leave all of that in and here we've got the very uneven shoreline that you get with that ripple when the surf goes out or the wave goes out and it's always interesting because there's varying depths of water in that little ripple that goes out so I've just put a little bit of the ocean color into that raw sienna and you can see how it's just gone a little bit darker to make it look quite watery And I'm just softening some of those edges and this is all taking place while that wave that I've painted so far dries Okay, now time to start on the rocks so this is an area where um, calligraphy brushes come into their own because you can use the flat side of the brush like horizontal to the paper and sculpt out those rocks and you can get fabulous rock shapes you'll get little bits of light being left behind which you can paint over the top of or you might want to keep um, so if you're buying new brushes consider buying a calligraphy brush or buy brushes that have definitely got um, natural bristles in them 
synthetic bristles are good for lifting out they're very resilient but they're not good for watercolor because they just don't hold enough pigment and enough water and you can't get the wonderful marks with a synthetic brush that you can get with a natural bristle brush it just seems to go along the paper and just leave the pigment there beautifully whereas synthetic brushes are too stiff and they just don't seem to have the same kind of soul that um, a natural hair calligraphy brush has. So I flicked some dark little pieces there across the immediate foreground. I don't know if you can see those. And then I'm going to come back in. Now the rocks are damp at this stage, but because they're rocks, it doesn't matter if there's some cauliflowers happening there. In fact, it's probably going to make them more attractive, but you certainly wouldn't do it um, on your um, ocean. You've got to have, you know, either wet or dry. So the colour that I've put into the dark shadow in the immediate foreground was um, raw sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna, and then I put some Mars violet in to give it that purpley, shadowy, um, sandy sort of a look and then because that's damp you can flick paint into that and you can get some wonderful little splatters happening and it will add a bit of texture to the beach So with the rocks, um, the one in the photograph, they were okay at the beach, but they were very, very dark rocks. So if I made my rocks as dark as those, and they were very um, angular rocks, I didn't like them. So I thought I'd do more, the painting wanted more softer, um, more weathered rocks, rounder rocks, um, to go with uh, an overall, I think, softness of the painting. So I've gone along, as you can see now, where that water was flowing onto the beach with the foam and I've strengthened that. I've put a little bit of dark on my rigger brush and I've gone in and sort of trailed some dark there. It could be a bit of seaweed. Um, now with my rigger brush, this has got a fabulous point, I'm going to put some boats in. We'll put some racing yachts in. just to jazz up the background a little bit. And then just intensify those areas between the rocks with some more dark. Now rigger brushes, this one is very, very fine and has a beautiful point. They were eventually, they were actually um, invented, I think, in about the 1700s, 1800s, for painting ships' riggings when back in the days of the sailing ships. So today they are still called rigger brushes. And if you can find a good one, they are just worth gold because they will last you for 20 years, and um, they just do the most brilliant fine lines. And again, because it's a natural bristle brush it holds a lot of liquid and you can do I can do a thin line right across a full sheet of paper that's 76 centimeters long with one brush load of pigment on a rigger brush so I'm going to strengthen a little bit of detail now in that town um, just put some darks in And just because there's a bit of light and dark in the background and we've got the yachts in the foreground, your eye, when you see that, um, it will look like a little town, which is, I think, um, a terrific way to go. Okay, so the foreground is looking quite finished. So um, I'll just put put another boat in on the far right that needs a little bit more detail but 
I love a couple of seagulls. So what I've done in the past is go to the beach, take lots of photos of seagulls in flight, all different positions, and then I've got great reference material when I want to put a seagull in, depending if he's flying to the left or the right, um, I can uh, always have great reference material to paint from. So I think it could do with a little bit of dark underneath. And because that white pigment, I used Doc Martin's white there. Um, it's still slightly damp, so if I put dark into that, it will just soften the dark and look like the dark feathers <clears throat> on the seagull's wings. Just strengthen it a little bit more. Yeah. And of course, the best place to place your white seagulls is against a dark background. So just a little couple of little marks to suggest the curve of the body and he's got a bit of a tail showing in my reference image. So I better put a friend in for him otherwise he's going to be rather lonely. So I'll put another one here. And on my rocks there you can see that I have splattered a little bit of dark. Um, I used a mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna to splatter that when the rocks were just damp and then it softens the intensity of the splatters. If you splatter them when they're completely dry you might want to just give them a puff from puff of liquid from um, a spritzer or a fine mister bottle and that will just disperse them slightly. Okay, so here is the finished painting. Um, I've splattered a little bit of white um, in the middle distance there, in the centre of that wave and above the top, um, just below that yacht, a little bit of white, so to replicate the foam going up. So I hope you have really um, had a good time painting along. Um, and if you don't succeed at first, please just keep trying. Um, I have taken some white uh, foam, as you can see on the bottom right hand corner. The foam with a, the rigger brush and the Doc Martens white has gone up into the wave um, to strengthen that look of the flow of the water. So thanks for watching. Um, I'll put the materials and the colours used will be listed under the video for your information. Happy painting. Cheers. Jude.